Hey, what's up, guys? So, up next, we're gonna do We Scheme. This is offensive. Now, I watched a couple minutes of this. So, I don't know exactly what's going on here. But, I guess we're getting ready to find out. So, let's go. Now, also, the first uh, person that he looks up on YouTube, I went ahead and looked her up just to kind of see what kind of person she is. I'm not going to get into that right now, but just know that I know a little bit about her already. I didn't watch this video that he's going to put on here. So, I have no idea what this is all about. So, all I'm saying is, I know a little bit about her. So, let's get right on into it. Let's go. Hello, and welcome back to the channel. So, today, we are going to be correcting stupid people. It will not be hard to find these stupid people. All we're going to have to do is search general terms that sociologists would use, and we'll find plenty of stupid people. If you didn't know, the root to most of the political stupidity today stems from sociology. Sociology is like the worst of the sciences, if you can call it a science. It's a stretch to call it a science. Basically, sociology just does a bastardized version of the scientific method to prove whatever point they wanted to prove when they started their supposed research or experiment. In sociology, you look and you try to find out why people act a certain way, you decide the reason they act that way, and you take whatever statistical data you can manipulate to make it look like your original thought was correct. I am not exaggerating, that is... Now look. If anybody is basing their research on statistics, then yes, I agree. You are totally missing the mark when you're doing that. You know, because what you have to realize, there's a lot of room for error when you're looking at statistics. And just to name a few of the possible errors, okay, is where did the information come from? You know, who was the one that put the statistics out there, right? So you don't know if that person is using accurate data. Then you also don't know what all the variables are. You know what I'm saying? So... It, you you really can't, you know, if you're going to do research and you're going to include statistics, then you better have a lot more information to back up those statistics. Because if not, if all you got is the numbers, you haven't done anything. You let somebody else do the work for you. And you're going off of what they said. You didn't do any research at all. <laughs> do your own research. You know, that reminds me of the old phrase. I read it on the internet, so it has to be true. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're a fool if you think that. Come on now. So let's start with ableism. Just type in ableism. I'm sure we'll find some blue or pink haired moron to talk about it. What is Right off the bat, I think I'm going to have to call him out for that, you know, that slur that he just put out there. Because as he said, and we're going to rewind it because I want to get it right. That was correct. I am not exaggerating. That is how sociology works. So let's start with ableism. Just type in ableism. I'm sure we'll find some blue or pink haired moron to talk about it. What? Some blue or pink haired moron. So. 
you're really I'm trying to figure out why the idea of what color hair they have has any part in letting you know about their intelligence. I don't get that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But let's keep going. Let's, we're going to see. What is ableism? Ableism is the idea that people are socially constructed to just be horribly discriminatory against disabled people. Now, that would make sense, except the premise of it is that the problem is that able-bodied people are mistakenly viewing disabilities as a negative. You didn't hear that wrong. The premise is that it is incorrect to view a disability, something that disables you from doing something well, it is incorrect to view that as a negative. No sense will be made with sociology, don't worry. And we have a pink lady, pink haired lady, only like five videos. Now look, this is going to be pretty interesting for me. And I'm going to tell you why. Some of you guys, if you've already seen some of my videos, already know where I'm going with this. I myself am disabled. So if there's one thing I do know about, it's discrimination against people with disabilities. That is something I've experienced myself. Not somebody saying, oh, you're different, so you just think people are treating you different. No. I experienced it myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but... Let's keep going. I, I got no idea where this is getting ready to go, but we'll see. Perfect. Let's let's listen to Anne Elaney as much as we can muster. Hello, hello. It's Let's Talk Tuesday. So let's talk about casually ableist language. Hey, it's it's Tuesday here too. Perfect timing. Ableism, specifically casual ableism, is widely accepted in our society particularly when it comes to our language. Correct, because why wouldn't it be? If you're disabled, that sucks. The language matches the reality. Most people don't care about access or equality when it comes to people with disabilities. Not true, most people do care about access and equality. They just are also aware that having to have a wheelchair ramp sucks a lot more than being able to walk up the stairs. That, that's that's how this works. If our everyday language perpetuates the idea that they are lesser, ableism is... Well, they are lesser in the things we're talking about. Uh, uh, someone who cannot walk is lesser at walking than I am, which is directly what the terminology is. There, There's nothing in ableist language, as they would label it, that demeans the individual. It demeans the disability because the disability sucks ass. It's constantly used to insult others... Or describe yes, because it would be insulting to imply that someone is lacking in a certain quality. Look at look at this like dislike ratio. You gotta love it. For example, if now look, so far my only gripe with him as far as the his analysis goes here is that he's going a little bit too fast is lacking in a certain quality. Look at look at this like dislike ratio. You got to love it. For example, if uh I am racing someone and I want to insult them for being slow, I'll be like, "You're slower than my crippled grandma." Because my crippled grandma is not very fast cuz she got a bad back. That's insulting. That's the whole point. What part of that makes me say my crippled grandma is less of a human being? She's my own damn grandma. She's not less of a human being. She sucks at running because she's fucking disabled. It's not that hard. Describe something as negative. And oftentimes... Yes, because it's negative. Times people don't even realize where these words are coming from. No, people aren't as dumb as you. Most of us realize exactly where they're coming from, why we're using them, and how. I, I know that the hair dye has rooted into your brain, but we're not as dumb as you. What these words mean. 
we know that too. They're they're not that tough of words. They're words like crippled, gimp, stuff like that. Y- you know? There. Well, guess what? I've been called that before. I've been called grandpa before. Because I don't walk very good. So, I know all about it. You know, I used to work at a factory. And it was pretty much a everyday thing for people to make fun of how I walk. That's just how it was. There's using disabilities as insults. Remember those campaigns to stop saying that's so gay? Honestly, gay faded out of fashion because everyone got sick of using it as an insult. Like, I feel like they think that they got like this social justice victory. But people stopped saying gay because gay was just trending at the time and then people got bored of it, like most insults. Nobody was saying gay to insult gay people. And when they are, well, you know, you get into some fuckery waters. Same thing with the other F word. Because why are you using homosexuality to express something negative? You're really confusing two different things. So if I'm insulting your ability to mentally process something and I call you retarded, what you are trying to debate is the idea that what I am saying is incorrect to think that it's negative to have mental retardation or a learning disability. No, it's an absolute negative. That That's just what it is. Being gay is not an absolute negative. You're really trying to mix up two things that shouldn't be mixed up right now of campaigns creating awareness of harmful language like the use of the r word retarded we should have included the word lame do you know- we shouldn't have included the room uh, the word lame she's gonna act like do you even know what the word lame means yes the word lame usually means one of your limbs doesn't work like you got a lame leg lame arm it's it, it was a medical term for something that don't fucking work it's a negative thing an absolute negative so that would be a good word to use as an insult you know what lame means? Yep. It means someone who can't walk. Not necessarily, but you're close. I- I'm proud of you. Or walks with pain and or difficulty. Yeah, it's it has to do with their limbs. I don't know what... Well, guess what? That's me. As I just said, people's called me Gimp before. And Grandpa and everything else because I have trouble walking. You know what I'm saying? You're not understanding here. Just to be clear, it's not just your legs. Having a body part, especially a limb, so disabled as to impair... Okay, let's take a look here and see what we got. Lame definition. Having a body part... And especially a limb so disabled as to impair freedom of movement. The accident left him lame for life. Marked by stiffness and soreness, a lame shoulder. Lacking needful or desirable substance. Weak ineffectual a lame excuse now look the stiffness and soreness guess what that's my whole body pretty much every limb is affected by that Just to let y'all know. Her freedom of movement. So uh, she doesn't even know what lame means because she was just restricting it to legs and walking. No, no, no. Lame is limbs, like I said before she started talking. I decided to Google search ableist to look for like, uh, you know, maybe some clips for the video uh, and images. But I found the third image right, or fourth image right here. I thought this must be like a parody of the type of people who would believe this shit. So I wanted to read the funny parody website, but you can't make this shit up. This is legitimately challenging ableist language. (laughs) It's like a tutorial. 
<laughs> on how to teach against ableism. <laughs> Look at the stock image of the class they chose. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. But this is what that class would look like, no doubt. All right, let's keep going. After learning the words true definition, go No, that, that's not the word. What are you got against people with different color hair? What my question is, if it was somebody with gray hair or blonde hair or red hair, you wouldn't say anything, right? Because those are natural hair colors. But... We all have the right to be ourselves. You know, just because if I wanted blue hair, what the hell does that matter? If I want blue hair, I'll turn it blue. <laughs> I've changed my hair to black before, which I liked it. That's the only color I would ever change it to, though. You know, but it's up to personal preference. So I don't understand why it's such a big deal for somebody to have pink hair, blue hair. It's unique. It makes them different. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's true definition. You didn't even get it right. I'd look it up for yourself. I, I did. I did because it sounded like you got it wrong and you did get it wrong. If I promise you, that's what the dictionary... You know, it's not what they'll tell you because, again, you limited it to walking and legs and that's not what it means. And I certainly no longer feel comfortable using it in that way. Good for you. Why are you pushing that on anyone else? Nobody's telling you what words you have to use or don't have to use. You're the one trying to tell everyone else what words to use because you think you figured something out that nobody else using that word has. See, this is the mindset that you have to be to be a, a sociologist type person. To think that for some reason you're the only one that knows things that most people knew their whole life from basic common sense. It's very clear that people knew what it meant. Yeah, except for you. And they started using it to describe things in a negative way. Correct, because it's pretty damn negative if your limbs don't work. Now things like the word lame are, for the most part, very unintentional. A lot of people do not know what that word means. I don't think it's as many people as you think. So where it comes from. Most people probably know exactly what lame means. But then, Another common thing is how people literally use disability in order to insult or condescend to someone. Correct, because it's very insulting for someone without a disability to be attributed a disability due to their lack of ability to do something, right? You're essentially saying someone who is well-bodied and able to do something is failing at a task as much as someone who was not well-bodied and able to do it. That's how the insult works. What are you, blind? Uh, are you deaf? What is wrong with you? Are you mentally ill? You need help. Who says, are you mentally ill? <laughs> people say, are you crazy? Are you insane? Blind and deaf people. Pretty sure they wouldn't classify being blind and or deaf as a positive. So if someone failed to see something that was obvious in their line of sight, you would call them blind, essentially stating that you should have seen that object. So in this context, you have failed. This is not an insult at blind people. This is an insult at you for being well-sighted, but acting as if you were not. But these are concepts that take critical thinking and a lot of, you know, connections to understand the true nuance of the insult. And just like people like this don't understand sarcasm, they also don't understand insults or who is actually being insulted. I would say without a shadow of a doubt there is a correlation to general iq and likelihood of being offended so what i would imagine is kind of a bell curve right when you're in like average intelligence and right below or right above average intelligence you'll have a spike of likelihood to be offended and once you get into exceptionally intelligent or exceptionally unintelligent you're no longer likely to be offended there is no chance no chance that that bell curve of correlation doesn't exist because offense is not given, offense is taken.
What if we are actually? Now, is he saying that if your IQ is below a certain point, you wouldn't be offended because you would be too stupid to realize that they're making fun of you. Is is that what he said? Hold on, we're gonna we're gonna rewind it because I want to make sure I want to process what he's saying here. Being offended. So what I would imagine is kind of a bell curve. Right when you're in like average intelligence and right below or right above average intelligence, you'll have a spike of likelihood to be offended. And once you get into exceptionally intelligent or exceptionally unintelligent, you're no longer likely to be offended. There is no chance, no chance that that bell curve of correlation doesn't exist because offense is not given, offense is taken. What if we are actually blind or visually impaired? Then that sucks. What if we are actually deaf or hard of hearing? Then that sucks. What if we actually do? I'm still not sure what he was trying to get at right there. It didn't make sense to me. So he said at the end, offense is not given. Hold on, we're, we're going to have to run that back again. Mind, essentially stating that you should have seen that object. So in this context, you have failed. This is not an insult at blind people. This is an insult at you for being well sighted, but acting as if you were not. But these are concepts that take critical thinking and a lot of, you know, connections to understand the true nuance of the insult. And just like people like this don't understand sarcasm, they also don't understand insults or who is actually being insulted. I would say without a shadow of a doubt, there is a correlation to general IQ and likelihood of being offended. So what I would imagine is kind of a bell curve. Right when you're in like average intelligence and right below or right above average intelligence, you'll have a spike of likelihood to be offended. Okay, so look. So it really looks like he's saying the lower your IQ is, the less likelihood that you would be offended. I gotta tell you something. That's not right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now look. I am myself LD. Okay, I have learning disabilities myself. Now, as I just said in another video, the only thing that makes me different is because I learn a little bit slower than everybody else. The more complex something is, the harder it's going to be for me to take it in and understand it. But that doesn't mean I can't learn anything. It doesn't mean I'm not smart or that anything like that. So from my experience, I'm going to say I disagree with that. You can easily offend people who have low IQ scores. And because this is a research channel, I'll try to prove it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, let's keep going. And once you get into exceptionally intelligent or exceptionally unintelligent, you're no longer likely to be offended. There is no chance no chance that that bell curve of correlation doesn't exist because offense is not given offense is taken what if we are actually blind or i still don't get that last part he said because offense is not given offense is taken 
but he said someone with lower IQ scores has less likelihood of being offended by someone insulting them. I'm guessing that that's what he was saying, right? Is that what you is that what he's saying? I'm not sure yet. Duh. I think you might have to explain that one a little bit better. Blind or visually impaired. Then that sucks. What if we are actually deaf or hard of hearing? Then that sucks. What if we actually do struggle with mental illness or mental disability? Well, that sucks, but what is your fucking point? That's why they're insults. Do you know that negative stuff exists in the world? When one asks such things in this context, when you use this as a way to condescend or insult... So let me ask you, genius. You, you get it? That's sarcasm because you're not a genius. Maybe she'll get it someday. What insults would be approved by you. I, I really think that she's she's on the wrong mark here. I'm gonna help you out. The platform you're looking for is don't insult people because it's mean. That's it. You don't have to try to act like you're scientific about it. One really easy fix for this, for all of your woes, is to stop the facade of thinking you're smarter than you are and just go straight into people shouldn't insult each other. And then people will be free to say, you know what, fuck off because we should be able to insult each other. Or you're right, no one should ever insult each other again. Put them in jail if they insult someone because feelings being hurt is more important than anything. At least you have an argument that... Now, to me, this whole debate right here brings up the idea, like Eminem calling somebody gay right or like in a rap battle if someone says you know throws out those kind of slurs right and then people say oh well that's homophobic well no I don't think so I don't think it is and the reason why I'm going to say that it's not is because you're calling that specific person that, okay? But that does not mean that you're saying, okay, that it's bad for other people to be that way. Now look, if someone is actually straight and you call them gay, that's an insult, right? But if someone is actually gay and you call them gay, that's not an insult. At least I wouldn't think so. You know, because they're actually gay. So when, when that is tossed around as an insult, I don't think it's meant to insult all the people who are gay. I think it's just meant to insult that specific person because they would view that as a negative. So I'm going to use that to insult you specifically. Not everybody who is gay. You know, so that's my view on that. You know. Just because you call someone gimp. Doesn't mean you're throwing shade at everybody who's disabled with mobility issues okay that that's not what it means if you said in a broad statement people with disabilities who can't walk right disgust me that's when i'm gonna say that person is being discriminatory against people with disabilities but only then, if they use a broad statement like that, directed at everybody who fits in a specific category. If you're using an insult to one specific person, no matter what it is, it's still directed at that one specific person. You know, if you told someone, well, you're a stupid woman... 
Does that mean you're saying all women are stupid? Well, no, that's not what it means at all. You're saying that woman is stupid. You're not saying all women are stupid. You're saying that particular woman is stupid. So there's a big difference between saying you're a stupid woman and saying women are stupid. Those are two totally different things. One of those would be classified as being rude. The other one would be classified as just downright dis disrespectful and disgusting. So look. We can't expect to escape rude people. Okay? That's not going to happen. We have to be adults about it and realize. People are going to be rude. People are going to say some messed up crap. And we have to realize we don't have to fight every single battle that comes our way. We just don't. If you can let it go, then just let it go and keep on going. That's absolutely the best practice. You know, there's been... There's a lot of fights that could have been avoided had someone had just been the bigger person and walked away and said, it's not worth my time and energy. I'd rather spend my time and energy on people who likes me and wants to be around me. You know, you want to sit and throw shade at me and, and call me names and this and that. That's fine. I don't got to be around you. You go find somebody else to do that to. I don't got to sit there and take it. It's as simple as that. But just because they say you're a gimp or whatever else they want to use. Doesn't mean they hate people with disabilities. It's that simple. Feelings being hurt is more important than anything. At least you have an argument that has some sort of sense to it instead of what you're doing right now you're doing now look just because you might call somebody a gimp because they don't walk right it just means that you're insulting that specific person with something that you think will insult them if you call a straight person gay that is an insult to that specific person. That does not, however, mean that you hate gay people. You know, calling somebody gay would be an insult to one person and not be an insult to another. It's that simple. Makes you less than. No. It's that the disability is less than the alternative. It is better to be able to hear than not be able to hear. That is the implication. And then the implication further is that if someone should be able to hear and they're not, and I call them deaf, I'm saying that you are wasting your gift of hearing. It is not insulting a deaf person. Then there's using a disability and mental slash chronic illness as an expression. Yeah, I'm super OCD about my books. So that's called sarcasm and hyperbole. Let's just, for shits and giggles, exaggerated statements or claims not meant to be taken literally. Taking it literally. <laughs> you are the problem. Hyperbole. All of this is hyperbole. Even the insults. The insults, it's all a form of hyperbole. Language from sick and disabled communities is harmful. Say- To who? Let's do something I actually am. Manic depressive disorder, cyclothemic disorder, ADHD. The most common of those is people who say, I'm so ADD, and they do not suffer from ADHD, and ADHD fucking sucks. How is that harmful? Because for me, I'm just gonna be like, yup. How is it harmful to point out the truths of reality in a way that's either meant sarcastically, or to insult, or as hyperbole, or whatever else? How is that harmful? If that's harmful, then everything is harmful. Every joke ever made is harmful. Every insult ever made is harmful. And like I said, your platform should be never insult anyone, never make a joke, dye your hair pink. That's a better platform. You're welcome. And things like that. I still don't understand 
why the pink hair keeps coming up as a criticism. <laughs> I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Is it hurting anybody for her to dye her hair pink? Maybe pink is her favorite color. I don't know. <laughs> That's not hurting me. I like it. But anyways, back to the important aspect of this video. <laughs> you know, I've done quite a bit of research on my channel. I've looked at debates. I've looked at, you know, stuff like this before. I've never been quite this confused. So I think what I'll do after this, I will pull up that video of her and watch it all together. And then if I can make more sense out of it, then I'll come back with a part two on this. But right now, it, if she's saying, if you call someone a gimp, then you hate people with disabilities, then I got to say that's not right. You know, I've had people call me that and it was meant in a, a kind of a lighthearted, you know, throw a jab at you kind of thing. Now, even though it was lighthearted, it still is an insult. You know, but of course, I had to realize it's not meant to be an insult. So you do have to realize, if it's meant to be a joke, then take it as a joke. If it's meant to be serious, then talk to that person. Have a discussion. Just like what I'm doing right now, I'm having a discussion. <laughs> All right, let's finish this video out. We're almost done. Diminishes what those words really mean. I, I can't listen to her anymore. I can't survive another two minutes, but I'm going to see if she has a Twitter and I will bet, you know, my left testicle that if she has a Twitter, her pronouns are in the Twitter. There they are. Looks like she's handicapped. So I guess that's why she's saying this stuff. I take back literally nothing I say because you know what? This sucks, girl. Sorry that you have to be handicapped, because that fucking sucks. Like, you're essentially telling me to say that the fact that you're handicapped, it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. It's not a negative. Bullshit, it's not. It fucking sucks. We gotta get you better handicap access to shit. More, there's so many places that aren't even handicap accessible. Bro, it fucking sucks. Me uh, insulting someone who is able-bodied for acting like they're not is not an insult to you the closest to an insult to you is, is is an insult to the condition that you have because the condition you have fucking sucks and deserves to be insulted does it not anyway that's all for me today leave your scathing comments below if you enjoy the content you know this is a little different than what we usually do but it seemed like a fun ride but until next time i scheme you scheme we all scheme for now yeah, look Upon doing my own research on her, I did find out that she is disabled. Now, I don't remember exactly what it was because it's been a few days ago. My memory is not that great. All right, y'all. Well, look, I'm not 100% sure what to make of this. Throughout most of this, I was just left with more questions than answers right here you know what i'm saying now look we are definitely going to do some videos of just her you know because i feel like we haven't really gave her a fair chance and that's what i'm all about you know before i criticize somebody i want to make sure i'm criticizing them for the right reasons all right, I will see y'all in the next video. Until then, I'm out.